Hey, welcome back to room 237. This is John, coming back to another horror review. And this time I'm talking about 1989's Intruder. This was a movie I had years ago, and went, I had no idea what happened to it. Just got another copy of it, revisited it. And because there was a lot of shit that I forgot. But this is a very enjoyable movie. This is probably one of the better 80s slasher films. Uh, again, came out in 1989, so really came out like years after the peak of slasher films, but it belongs with films that came out during the peak, which I would say 78 to 84. It was uh, written and directed by Scott Spiegel, who co-wrote Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2 is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite films of all time. I love Evil Dead 2. This has an Evil Dead feel to it. You get some crazy camera angles. You get inventive camera work. Very bloody and gory. You get some great kills. Um, pretty much the story, it all takes place um, in this, not really a supermarket, but like a, a grocery store. I think the original title was called Night Crew, which wouldn't have been a bad title. Intruder is a title that gets thrown around a lot. I mean, you have that one Spanish-speaking film that I think is on Netflix. You have that new one coming out that's PG-13, and come, this is Intruder, all right? It's kind of funny. Like, up at the top, it said, like, starring Bruce Campbell from Evil Dead and Army of Darkness, and Sam Raimi, you know, director of Spider-Man, Dark Man and the Gift. First of all, Sam Raimi has a bit role in this, as does Ted Raimi. Bruce Campbell, this scene isn't even in the movie. He, Bruce Campbell's in it for like 40 seconds at the end. And he's like so far away you can barely see him. But I just think it's one of those tongue-in-cheek things that like Evil Dead was all about. Excuse me, but um, so yeah, there's this uh, supermarket, <clears throat> it's the last night because the two owners who are business partners are selling it, and it's all these teenagers essentially who work there, like there's Sam Raimi. I, I like how a lot of these slash films put some of the death scenes on there, like Sam Raimi getting a meat hook through his chin. Uh, the lead girl, who I'm guessing is Elizabeth Cox, she has this ex-boyfriend who's like the leather jacket 80s badass. He just gets out of jail. He keeps making these appearances and fighting people and calling. So you think he's going to be the killer? Well, spoiler alert, he's not. You also get a great role by Danny Hicks. Which Danny Hicks was the Bobby Joe, Bobby Joe, hillbilly from Evil Dead 2. You no, know, he's one of the store's owners. <clears throat> and pretty much it's just all these people getting killed off one by one. I mean, with slasher films, you don't really have to go in that in depth with it. Uh, <clears throat> Ted Raimi has a smaller part. He has like one line. But he's the guy that works in produce. He always has headphones on. He's always doing like, doing this like nerdy, quirky dancing while he's working. He has headphones. He gets a huge butcher knife like through the top of his head so his headphones come off. Of course, <clears throat> Sam Raimi gets the meat hook. Um, you get this one guy who sort of talks like a like a weird 80s stoner like uh so like um i i just need a box cutter <laughs> um, i don't know if this is bad acting or if that's just the kind of character he is but you know <clears throat> if you've ever worked in a place like this like i was watching this last night in i i used to work at walmart and this movie brought me back to working at walmart because, you know, everyone in their own department 
uh, I also worked stocking and grocery. I did a lot of shit out back as well. And I had to use the baler. Which, if you don't know what a baler is, watch The Office and find out. But it's like this giant trash compactor for cardboard. And, you know, you hit a button and it's like big hydraulic thing comes down. This dude gets like half his head in the way and like crushes half his head. Then there's like a bandsaw for cutting meat. A guy gets his head cut in half with it. Great gore, too. I mean, the gore was done by K&B. So, Greg Nicotero, Robert Kurtzman, and Howard Berger. The guys that helped Sam... Uh, Sam. That helped uh, Tom Savini do Day of the Dead. They did Evil Dead 2. Greg Nicotero, of course, went on to have a world of success doing gore effects for other things. Now he's directing a lot, too. I guess he directed a lot of episodes of Evil... Uh, Evil... Can't talk today. Walking Dead. Excuse me. And, um... But other than just the gore effects, you get some inventive camera work that you saw in the Evil Dead films. Like, for example, there's a scene where this girl who is... Renee Estevez, I guess is Charlie Sheen, Emilio Estevez's sister. She answers the phone, but the camera's like inside the phone. It's like a dial phone. So the screen is all black except for like the circle with all like the, the nine circles and the one in the middle. And you see her. So like the camera's inside the phone looking up at her. She's talking on the phone. There's another scene where the lead girl is sweeping. She's sweeping the floor. But, like, the camera's on the floor, so you see the broom pushing all the dirt and stuff over the camera. And eventually that turns into, like, a pushing transition shot. That was really cool. Um, you get this one death scene where, I can't remember what they're called. You see them on a desktop. It's like this big needle, and you just, like, put stack papers on it like that. The dude gets his head smashed on it through the eye. And his desk lamp fell over, so the blood's going all over the bulb. And you get this great shot of the ceiling where it's just like the river of red filling up and it's getting darker, darker red on the ceiling. <clears throat> so that, that's why I feel like this movie is underrated. Like, nobody talks about this film. Like, it, it has a low-budget feel, but it doesn't... But it's it more like an Evil Dead sense. It's like, yeah, it looks and feels low budget, but there's a charm to it. There's there's inventiveness and imagination. And like I would consider this like the the evil dead of slasher films. And yeah, the front says from producer or writer. Yeah, producer Lawrence Bender, who would go on to produce Reservoir Dogs, Pulp Fiction, and From Dust Till Dawn. So, yeah. A lot of big people behind this movie. But yeah, uh, saying like Evil Dead stuff. Just all the inventiveness and the gore and the low budget feel but still being very entertaining. Some comedy moments that aren't over the top. But, you know, as far as 80 slashers go, this is definitely a watch. Highly recommend it. Um, I think there's like a newer, it's not uh, Scream Factory, but I think there's like another newer release of this. But I really like this cover. I like this version. And there's no features. This is as bare bones as it comes. But yeah, Intruder is just a very fun, underrated, very gory, great kills. I, I also like the, the idea of like uh, like a grocery store. Because, I mean, it's something different. It's a place that hadn't really been done yet. It feels like an early 80s slasher film. And for coming out in 89, you know, sometimes it's good to be behind the times. Because slasher films by 89 started to suck anyway. But yeah, Intruder. Very fun movie. Definitely check it out. Especially if you're a slasher fan. You won't regret it. And it's pretty cool to see, you know, Sam Raimi in front of the camera. I just wish Bruce Campbell had a bigger role. 
Because it's funny, an ex-cop is trying to find out who the killer is and what possessed him to start the bloody rampage. I'm, like, they make it look like it's the Bruce Campbell character because he's, like, wearing a suit in this picture. He's a fucking officer at the end of this movie. And you see him for, like, 30, 30 40 seconds. It, like, there's no cops. There's literally no other characters but the people in the store. <clears throat> but, yeah. <clears throat> Intruder is a whole lot of fun. If you can sit through some of the duds of 80s slasher films, this one's definitely imaginative and definitely worth the watch. Intruder is awesome. So, that's all I got for that. But for Room 237, thank you.